And man, D Gun, you know you're gonna be wrong because we going we going to them playoffs this year, and you're gonna be like, Oh, I what? didn't see this coming. Oh, you what? know. What? <laughs> what? You heard it from me first, big man. Okay. We're gonna be in the All wild car. Right. We're gonna get out there and get it. Okay, hey, hey, number two. But I believe someone you're in charge of uh, is is, is going to join the show. And let's not forget that this show is brought to you exclusively by Ocean Casino Resort. Uh, make sure you book your next weekend at Ocean Casino and go for the win. I'll let you take this one, Gunner. Who are we talking to here? Oh, my goodness. He actually showed up. How I'm about shocked. that? Get your butt up out of here. I'm, <laughs> shocked. I'm, so, I'm shocked he showed up. Hey man, uh, first of all, thank you, thank you for com- thank you for coming on the show. And we can keep a picture up. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. First of all, uh, secondly, um, your thoughts on the way the defense played tonight? Because if you look at if you look at social media, people people are just ripping up Jonathan Gannon and the way the defense played tonight. Hold on, say that again. I just got in the car. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I told you, I told you it's like babysitting. I told yeah, you, right, said, right, right, right. Here's, here's what I said. I said, uh, first of all, your general impressions of the way the defense played, because people on social media are just ripping up the way the defense play. And Jonathan again is uh, play calling. He was, he was just so overwhelmed, probably with how bad the defense has been playing that he he was like, oh, I can't hear you. I'm oh, out. Oh, when he's back. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Oh. Oh, there we go. Was- yeah, I hear y'all now. I hear y'all talking that stuff. But no, I think that um, I think that the defense uh, got better as the game went. I think that um, you know, we in the end when we needed to make a stop, that penalty uh, with Janar hurt us, and then we just uh, I feel like Rodney stumbled where, and if he wouldn't have stumbled, they would have made that stop on the one to Antonio Brown. That was just that was a good catch, great catch, uh, great concentration. Uh, but I felt like the Eagles' defense got better as the game went on. It just sucked that we couldn't, um, you know, capitalize on, um, you know, on, on offense. Because how we went down the first drive, um, you know, I thought it was going to be back and forth. All we needed was a stop. And we ended up getting two stops in a row. But we just couldn't, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. And, uh, you know, against Brady, you got to make sure you take full advantage of everything that he gives you. Mm-hmm. Hey, two two questions and one real quick. Number one. This was alumni night. Uh, was this your first game since uh, you had your surgery for the Achilles injury? And number two, I know you had told me a while back also that you've been spending a lot of time coaching up both uh, Josh Sweat and uh, Derek Barnett. Uh, so was this your first game back on the sidelines since the injury? And how much have you been trying to help these guys better visualize what they're seeing across the line of scrimmage? Oh, I try to help them as, as much as I can, especially Josh. Um because I told him he got a motor. And so, you know, make sure that you're using it because uh, that's how you're going to make your plays. And I think that, uh, you know, with Fletch, I know Fletch just missing me out there because Fletch always say it every time. But uh, I told him, like, you got to get these boys up to speed. You got to make sure that you uh, make them believe, make them feel like you trust them too, just as much as you trust mm-hmm. me because that matters too. Because in moments when you need it, uh, if I know the next man next to me is counting on me and he, and he trusts me, uh, it, it does something to me, and I think that uh, mm-hmm. with these guys being young, they they need that confidence and that belief uh, in themselves first, and then you know belief in their team. The, the teammates need to believe in them too that they can get it done. And so I think uh, with Fletch being in that uh, that position of where I would be uh, if I was out there, uh, I think he just continue continuously need to step up in that area to make sure that uh, these boys um, know that you know that he believed that they got it they got his back and he got theirs too and i think um everything is gonna keep getting better because these guys they roll chains uh with me going down a lot of guys are asked to do more and so i try to make sure i be there even now i'm about to go home i probably watch some film see what happens see what where we can get a little better and and talk to some of the guys that want to be that want to be want to be uh they want to listen i would say and um i think we got a bunch of good guys that want to get better and, and look better on film so uh, I'm going to make sure I do my part as a leader and try to make sure I help them uh, the best way I can from the side. Yep. Uh, Brandon, one of the things I, I, thought, I thought was interesting from this week was your defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, said, I don't have a scheme. And then he kind of backtracked and said, well, of course I have a scheme. 
What do you think is the overall philosophy he has as a defensive coordinator so far? Um, I think that uh, he 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 pretty much wants to switch it up and um, you know try to confuse the D. I mean, confuse the offense um, on on presenting different looks. Um, I feel like some of the stuff that he wants to do, he just has, doesn't have the personnel for it. Um, some of the stuff. But I think he's doing a great job of adjusting of what we have uh, on defense and who's available to do and who and who does what better in, in different uh, situations. So I think uh, he does a good job of, of you know, really trying to um, adapt to what he has. And I feel like as we keep going, as he keep being the coordinator, he to continue to keep getting the players to do everything that he wants to do because I'm sure, you know, with us, um, we used to run an OP front, and I started getting real good at it, and, you know, he was trusting me to do uh, certain jobs, and so he could run certain things, but now I'm out, and now it's guys that have to learn on the fly that didn't really get to get those reps in training camp because I was in there for the most part, and now when the season mm-hmm. come, I get hurt. Now a lot of guys are are um are asked to step up and, and step into this role but as coach no coach you gotta rep it and and i feel like coach gannon uh kind of shot away from some of the stuff that uh he used to call when i was in there because uh you need guys that you can trust that can get certain jobs done uh and so i think um i love his scheme i love what he's doing i i believe that every week is, is something different and, and he's keep getting better as as the game goes and the adjustments uh, from what I see, is getting better. Um, but, yeah, penalties is, is hurting us, self-inflicting stuff. Like that penalty uh, with Jannard, that that was, yep. that was tough because we just had got to yep. stop. And, man, you get a personal foul in that situation, you, you we can't have it. Um, and we all know, we all know it was more to it than just that play. But that mm-hmm. play would have helped us. Uh, if if we would have been able to get a stop, who knows? We might be talking about a win after this, 29, 28, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. the score would have been. Mm-hmm. But I believe if we got that ball back, we probably would have um, gotten that zone. But mm-hmm. uh, it is what it is. We, we fought hard, but we just came up short in the end. As someone who you said like coaches up these younger players, what do you say after these penalties? I know today wasn't as bad as some games have been in the past, but is it super frustrating for you to watch and not being able to be out there with them? Oh, yeah. I'll be in there cussing myself out almost because I'm mad because <laughs> certain situations, <laughs> you see certain guys, you like, man, I wish I could be down there and say certain things to certain guys because I know how certain guys tick. And I can tell when certain guys frustrated because I've been with these boys. I mean, I know when Fletch frustrated because I can see him yelling at somebody. <laughs> and it's, just, it's, just, it's just cool to it's just cool to um, look at it from a different perspective from the sideline. And now I when I am back on that field and knowing um, you know what I've known now, being up in the coach's box, hearing some of the coaches, it really made me respect the coaches even more to know that these boys know what they be talking about because certain calls that they making, they making good calls, but obviously they're not playing the game uh, in certain situations, but, but people got to make plays. And sometimes it it happens. Sometimes it don't, maybe it might be a misread by Jalen. Maybe it might be a missed tackle, but the guy was in position uh, on defense. It's always something. um, And, you know, that you can't control, but I think that we got a, Number one, we got a good staff of coaches that knows what they're talking about. And all we got to do is just is just go out there and play and, and believe in the, in the scheme of, of whatever, we, whatever we're doing and, and keep working your technique because that's what tend to catch up to you. Uh, your technique, uh, technique uh, errors that happen in the game, that's when you get those penalties when people grabbing and you know how I go holding and all kind of different things. And sometimes people tired uh, and that's mm-hmm. stuff that you can control. And I feel like um, you just got to keep getting better. You know, Brandon, I know you are probably as positive as anybody I've been around in in terms of professional sports. But you do realize right now through six games, you're going to have a hard time convincing people on the outside looking in that you have a good coaching staff the way some things have, have played out through six games. Right. I get that. But but people don't. I wish I wish we all could, you know, be coach for the day. I wish I can just yeah. say, you know what, yeah. you the head coach right now. Tell me what you would do. Call a game and and call it. I mean, certain stuff that 
that you have planned don't always go as planned. And so sometimes you go away from the game plan and you call different calls just to switch it up or whatever it is that coaches be going through sometimes. And then as players, uh, certain guys that you've seen on film, they they look like uh, one guy and then you're playing against him that day and he might not look like how we look and certain things that he won against that one that was that people was winning against him might not work that game so you gotta adjust yeah. as you keep going and i think um yeah it's tough because you gotta win in order to cover up some of the issues and us losing people want people heads fast in this city so <laughs> i mean yeah. i already know yeah. they <laughs> It's, it's gonna yeah. be hard, but but what the, what I love the most is is no expectations. Uh, now nah. everybody is like whatever, whatever this team gonna do, that's what they gonna do. Ah, oh, they suck. Whatever they saying, it don't matter. Uh, because it's about us at the end of the day in that room, and only people that's gonna change that taste. Um, and you know I know all about it because people yep. ain't like me in the yep. beginning. Get him out of here. He sucked. Yep. We should have got Earl Thomas. We should have got Jason Pierre-Paul. But all I did was continue to keep working and block y'all out. Like, because y'all be yeah, talking all that stuff. People yeah, that's, play nothing. That's, that's what I said. Get, get, him out of, get him out of here. Where's Earl Thomas? Where's JPP? I didn't, I didn't even like you back then. No, you didn't. You didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you know what? It, it's all good because really it's how you flip it. It's how your, yeah. it's your attitude moving yeah. forward. It is what it is. Like people gonna say what they want. You ain't gonna be able to please everybody. So, mm. all right, whatever. Now, now you don't got no expectations of me. So when I do make plays, it's one of those things where you like, oh, I got a clap for him. He did make a play to help us win the game. Oh, he doing this. Oh, this. He all right. Oh, he's starting to be all right. You know, he's starting to come into his own. But I feel like it's up to you to make that decision every day and to block out the noise and just say, I know I'm good. I, that's where your confidence start to come in. That's when you start relying on your teammates a little more because now it's only y'all that's going through it because everybody going to say what they want to say, but we the ones that's going through it every day, putting that work in. And only, only way we're going to get better is having all what 56 of us, that's on that team, 62 of us, uh, even the practice squad guys, we need everybody to give us a good look. We need you to play your part, whatever your role is on this team, maximize it because it could be you could get more one day, but you got to maximize the role that's, that you've uh, been given in order to get more, I feel. And I think you got to be happy for people in order to get more. You got to be able to just go out there and just – and just play because we got the number one job I feel in America and it should be fun. It should be, you know, trying at times, but that's what make you better. And I think, uh, as you know, man, this team going to turn it around. I'm telling you, yeah. you see, you see, you see how we hung in there with them boys today. You know, all the mistakes we done made, we, we was one play away from almost making it happen, but we didn't make it happen. We came up short. It was an ugly loss whatever you want to call it whatever people saying but um i'm telling you we got the right coach for the job and he gonna get it right uh brandon just real quick if if i was calling plays i'd at least call a couple more running plays at least to give you guys a break on defense he knows i know let me knows. tell you this yeah, go week ahead. one, what you say? Week one, what y'all see? Y'all see the old line, saw, fresh, right everybody, yeah, yeah. Lane, all them boys, all them boys. You know what I'm saying? Now, you got some, you got some guys in there that that they trying to get that chemistry with. Um, and so when Brooks and Lane get back, and you will see a lot more running, I feel. But I, I think okay. that uh, okay. they got a, they got some issues. Uh, we got some issues that we got to address up front. You know, and I think they plan okay for what they've been asked to do. But uh, as you know, um, the running game, you, you want your hogs in there. You want your Brooks. You want your Lane. You want the, you want your starting line that you had because them boys is, is good. And I don't know how much – sometimes you don't know how much faith and how much trust that, you know, has been built with certain guys that's in right now. And I think it's only going to get better as they keep getting better uh, every week. But, you know, I think that – Coach definitely is 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 hard to call a running play sometimes when you don't have that chemistry with certain you gotta get build that chemistry together with uh with the guys that's in there that's being asked to do something that you know they didn't expect uh to happen so fast, I guess. That's what I can say. Uh last one for me anyway, BG. Uh any interaction with Tom Brady tonight? You having to see him at all? 
<laughs> I, I couldn't see him. I, could, uh, I couldn't see him, man. I was in, I was up in the coach's box. I was up in the coach's box, man. I couldn't get on the field, but you know, when I do get a chance uh, to talk to Brady, it would probably be off the field somewhere up in Michigan. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm asking him to sign that ball. If he can't, I don't want to send it to him because gotcha. I don't think he's going to send it back. <laughs> oh, my hey, Devin, you got anything for him? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks, okay. Brandon, for, for joining us. All right, real quick, Brandon. Yeah. Number one, you, you cannot say wrong again, D-Gun, because I did pick Tampa Bay to win this game tonight. <laughs> so you can't say wrong again. You can't do that. And number two, please tell me your wife, Carlin, is not with you right now. No, no, I, I got my family in here. Say hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? Wait, <laughs> wait is, she, is she there? No, nah, she's not here. She uh, she had we couldn't get a babysitter for the kids, and this was kind of last minute because I I wasn't gonna come because we had family in town, and yeah. so I'm um uh, I'm I'm over here, you know what, showing them a good time, and and I'm glad we did come to the game, even though we lost. It was definitely good good experience, good good time. Yep. I had a lot of fun yep. yelling, <laughs> and man, D Gun, you know you're gonna be wrong because we going we going to them playoffs this year, and you're gonna be like, oh, I didn't what? see this coming. Oh, you what? know. What? <laughs> what? You heard it from me first, big man. Okay. We're going to be in the right. wild car. We're going to get out there and get it. Okay. Hey, hey, number two, when you get home, tell Carla, I'm so glad she was not in the car with you because every time she's with you, she's yelling at me for holding you up. So I'm glad that she is not in there <laughs> me tonight. So please tell her I said that. Hey, well, you know, she probably wouldn't have did that tonight because we sit here and wait on the cars to go back because it is packed right now. You know how it is at the game. You ain't moving nowhere anyway. So, but uh, D Gun, send that send that check in the mail, man. This ain't for free. You know this. Man. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Since you talking all that stuff, this ain't free, man. This this costs you money right here. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> if you want to get paid. Your request should go to Jacob Media Sports Network. A <laughs> broke. <laughs> No, no, you on your own now. You out here on your own now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 appreciate you. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Always. Appreciate you. BG, nothing but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, quick healing, you, my friend. Quick yep. healing. Uh, thank you, Brandon Graham, for coming on. That's uh, pretty awesome right there. Gunner, thanks for booking your friend there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, with friends like that, you don't need enemies, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, obviously, that uh, we are brought to you by the great people of Stateside Vodka. See the scroll below. Use promo code Jacob. That's promo code Jacob, J-A-K-I-B, for 15% off a one-liter bottle. Go to statesidevodka.com. We'll unpack all that Brandon, can, Brandon Graham gave us. There was a lot there when we return here on the live postgame show.